Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello to you all. Today we are going to talk about resources folder in our app section. So let's review it. What is resources folder? This folder is used to store the values for the resources that are used in many Android projects to include features of color, styles, dimensions, etc. etc. As you can see, we have five subfolders here that are Gravel, Layout, Menu, Mip Map, and Values. So let's explain each one of them. The Drawable folder holds all the images for our project. As a precaution, we need to be sure to choose images of appropriate size and resolution. Images that are too large or uh, with high resolution can cause uh, app crashing, so we need to choose carefully. Android currently supports only some image formats and uh, adding the wrong image format can cause app crash also. We can create some drawable objects that can be used as a custom design objects. That objects for example are backgrounds, borders or round shapes for some elements. So let's review our drawable folder. As you can see we have so many items here in our drawable folder. We have some images, as you can see JPEG, PNG format and we have some these XML objects. So let's review some of them. We have button back background folder here and this object is used for a background of our buttons. Here is the XML code, we have some shape here and as you can see our shape is rectangle, then we have our border colors of our object and its width, and then we have padding, it uh, represents uh, distance between text inside this object and its borders. We have color of this object, custom color, and then we have radius, and as you can see this comment here, the radius makes the corners rounded. We have some variations of button backgrounds as you can see we have different color of borders and it's the same for all of these objects just just the border color is different now we have border for edit text and text views same story uh, here as for the buttons trans button here and that's something that i would like to show you uh, I'm using color transparent for this object, so it's filled with color transparent. It's best to explain you this on one example, so let's go to our layout cards. And here we are. I'll show you how I used my trans button background now. If we click on this image or this text here, we need to do the same thing. So instead of typing the same thing twice for this image and text, I just added the big button, as you can see it's button, with transparent color. It's same here and here. You can see these outlines here that are all around these two objects. So I used a button to avoid coding with the same code twice. Now let's get back to review of our drawable folder. We have some rounded rectangles here. It's the same variation of the first element that I showed you. As you can see we have borders around top, bottom and left side of this object but not on the right side. So how I managed to do that? If you look at this stroke you can see that Android width of this stroke is 4dp. It's for the all borders. I added this inset object around my shape and I said that for every border I'll set the width manually. So for inset top I added minus 1 dp which means that from my 4 dps minus 1 dp top border is 3 dps. It's the same for left and bottom and for the right I added minus 3 dps and I've neutralized border on the right side as you can see here. That would be it for drawable folder. 
Uh, now let's go to the layout. Layout folder holds all the XML layout files for our project. Let's go through it. As you can see we have many activities here. We have three fragment layouts and then we have some custom layouts here. But all of this will be explained in some other tutorial. Menu folder is used when we want to display drop lists in our Android application or to make navigation bar. I'll show you the image so you better understand what are navigation bars and drop down lists. And as I said here is the drop down menu. So when you click on this button this menu will appear. Here is the bottom navigation bar and that's this. We also have it in our application. The MIP map folder holds the icon image for our app launcher. This should be only as large as necessary to support the devices you want to target for your app. If MIP map is absent for your project you can cause many errors. Now let's go to the volumes folder. In the volumes folder we have uh, colors, diamonds, strings and styles. So let's explain each one of them. The colors file holds the hex codes for each color we would like to use in our app. We can add new colors by adding a new color element, giving it a name and adding the desired color hex code. Android Studio provides a tiny preview of the color in the margin of the file. So, as you can see, we have our color line, then we have a name for our color and hex code for it. If we define color in colors, uh, we can use it every time by typing its name and not hex code every time. Now let's go to the diamonds. The diamond file holds all the measurements for our layouts. We can create new dimensions by adding a new diamond element, giving it a name and adding uh, desired dimensions in SP for text and DP for everything else. The strings file holds all of the text you would like to display to the user. You create strings by adding a new string element, giving it a name and adding the text you would like to display without quotes. Strings file is something similar to colors, so we can define some string and then use it by just typing its name instead of typing the whole string. So if uh, we have some story that we would like to use in our app many times we can just call it our story and then instead of typing that story every time we can just type the name of our string in strings folders and then we have styles file the styles file holds information about common attributes that you will see throughout the app if you choose to create a project with an activity Android Studio will provide a default theme in your styles. We can also create our own custom styles to provide common attributes across views. So let's go to the styles and as you can see here will be the base application theme and this theme is customized. I typed in uh, no action bar so I can remove action bar. I'll show you the picture of action bar so you can better view how it looks with and without action bar. Here is the difference between having and not having action bar in your application. The picture with action bar and the picture without action bar. And this would be it for resources folder. Now let's go to the assets folder. Assets provide a way to include arbitrary files like text, XML, fonts, music and video in our application. If uh, you try to include these files as resources, Android will process them into its resource system and you will not be able to get the raw data. If you want to access data untouched, assets are one way to do it. Assets added to your project will show up just like a file system that can read from by your application using Assets Manager. Android has a dedicated folder in its project organization that stores all these files. How we can create an asset folder. We can create an asset folder by going to app and then right click and then new 
and folder and then assets folder also in our assets folder we have font and font folder holds any custom font files we wish to use uh, Android currently supports some formats like .ttf, .otf and .ttc and XML font files so let's review our font as you can see we have four variations of our KVR Dreams font you can see how it looks and basically this would be it for this video I hope that you enjoyed and that you understood what are the resource folders and assets folders this video was more theoretically but you need to know both and theory and practical part until the next video thank you